Hello and welcome to the Kafisi Connect podcast, your source for a wealth of roundtable discussions on the workplace and business, as well as cultural news and trends from the diverse and dynamic continent of Africa. I'm your host, Georgia Weber, and today I'm very pleased to introduce David Makumi, who's the CEO of Faraja Cancer Support Trust. Welcome, David. Thank you, Thank you for, for joining us me. today. Pleasure. Amazing. So tell me a little bit about the um, Support Trust, how it works and how it kind of came to being. Yes, thank you very much. Faraja Cancer Support Trust has been around uh, for the last uh, 14 years, founded in 2010 by a cancer survivor herself. Um, and uh, having had her treatment elsewhere, decided to uh, establish a trust that will provide all sorts of support that is not provided within uh, the medical treatment. Uh, so a patient who is uh, facing cancer needs more than just chemotherapy or radiotherapy or surgery. There's a lot more that goes to make a patient complete their treatment, comply, and importantly, cope with the, with the cancer journey. And that's what Faraja Cancer Support does. It feels that that aspect of care that ordinarily uh, when people are busy giving chemo and radiotherapy, they don't think about uh, the patient that may need um, a, play, a safe space where they can talk about everything else, about their family, about their fears and concerns, uh, a, a place where they can connect with other patients uh, or other survivors who are facing a similar problem, or a place where even caregivers can connect with each other. Someone may be looking after a spouse, may be looking after a child or a family member who has cancer, and they need to connect with somebody else facing a similar situation and be able to share experiences, but also access complementary therapies. Are therapies that would improve your overall well, feeling of well-being. Sure. Yeah. You know, it yeah. could be Zumba, a place you can come and shake a leg or two, dance around and, uh, you know, um, just feel a lot better mentally and physically. A place where you can come and have yoga, if you're up to yoga, a session of yoga, a, a place where you can have something like Reiki or whatever other therapies that you desire or where you can actually drop by and see a psychologist um, for psychological counseling or a place where you can actually see a dietitian uh, drop by even for coffee or for information. Because, I mean, it's, that's, and is that something that's quite unique here in Kenya, offering that kind of support? Absolutely. It's, it's not something that you see offered in a well-structured way. I actually say we are the only centre that's offering all these things in one, under one roof in a structured format. I mean, a lot of other centres are doing a good work, excellent work, but then we tend to focus more on the medical aspects of care, uh, the chemo, the radio, and all those, and they are very important. Patients must comply, but we also must provide a supportive environment that would help this patient uh, complete their treatment and cope better. Because uh, what we do at Faraja, we look at the whole person, the person with the disease, not just the disease. Mm -hmm. It's very, very easy within the healthcare system for people to focus just on the disease. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's like a woman has breast cancer and we're thinking about the breast which has a cancer as opposed to the woman, yeah. the whole person, the person who has the disease. Yeah. Could be a wife or a spouse or a sister or an auntie or a grandmother to someone. Mm -hmm. What are their fears and concerns? Apart from just having the cancer, they could be professionals. They may be accountants, maybe... Um, they are executives in their own right. Maybe they are farmers or they belong to their community. There are many other things they do beyond just the disease. So in, in, increasingly, we are now focusing on the whole person, a holistic kind of approach to the person uh, because they may have multiple fears and concerns. Sure. In fact, some of them may not even be too worried about the disease because maybe they can afford to pay for, for, for their cancer treatment. They may be worried whether they will see their children through college uh, or see their the kids graduate. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know, they, you, you might think, oh, they're worried about their cancer. They're thinking, will I see my daughter walk down the aisle? Sure. You know, yeah. so yeah. all those sort of things are important to the patient. And that's what we at Faraja do. 
we look at what is important also to the patient and how can we help them uh, cope uh, with their next cycle of treatment. Because actually the treatment itself is quite, I mean, I've, my, both my parents have been through <coughs> cancer treatment and um, it's not just the diagnosis or the illness, as you say, the disease. The treatment itself is very, can be very invasive. It can be quite harsh, very difficult. Yeah, Patients absolutely. use very many um, descriptions of the treatment. For them, it's really harsh. It's hard on the body. It's hard on their emotion and psychological state. So we need to uh, put a patient in the optimal state yeah. to be able to cope with these tough treatments. Cancer treatments are not uh, are not um, they're not like the way you'd swallow some panado uh, for malaria or some fever. They first they are not only harsh, but they are complex. They're not just ordinary treatments. They are complex and they are long. So it's not treatment you take like you take a dose of antibiotics for five days and you're good to go. They are long and complex because a patient needs to understand, for example, um, between the treatments, they may have to have blood tests, they may have to have sometimes a scans, they just need to check their kidneys and liver that their body is coping the treatment. And there are situations where they will say, oh, we can't give you a chemo because maybe your blood counts are low. You know, all these complexities. Yeah. And they can be very confusing for a patient. And again, throw in the healthcare system, hospital corridors are called clinical sure forbidding yeah. and intimidating to the patients. And often so, talking about things you don't really understand necessarily because yes. it's a lot scientific and a lot, you know, of, a lot of medical so, medical kind of terminologies as well. Yeah. Exactly. And that's why we the Farage centers are created uh, in a way that patients can say maybe this is a little more homely. Uh, you are able to talk to people who probably understand their language, your language, yeah. not necessarily your vernacular, but understand that you are coming from a place of confusion. Mm -hmm. uh, and you, we do understand, you know, healthcare system, doctors, nurses, they are extremely busy. They have long queues of patients. They may not have time to break down all this information, mm -hmm. tell you what you can eat, what, what uh, and how you can cope. They may not have all the time to take you through all those. And that's where Faraja comes in uh, to offer a wholesome kind of uh, complementary services uh, because a patient may not even have to, to say they are not sleeping. You know, maybe they don't sleep too well. Uh, and when they have someone they can talk to about their fears and concerns, then... Uh, they, they will uh, obviously cope better. But the other thing is because they also meet other people with similar challenges, then they are able to share their own experiences. So sometimes they have all sorts of um, things that uh, even we, maybe the, the doctors or the nurses didn't tell them, but they are able to figure it out. But importantly for Faraja, we also provide accurate information. We also demystify some, some of the myths patients may come up with. You know, they come and say, oh, I had um, XYZ causes cancer. And there are lots of uh, myths around cancer, uh, understandably, because people want to fill the void of, of lack of information. So they will get information that sometimes is Amazing. not very, very accurate. You know, for example, people say, oh, you know, if they take a biopsy, uh, from uh, which is a tissue, uh, to go and examine in a laboratory and confirm you have cancer. If they take a, a biopsy, the cancer will spread. You know, that is not true. Yeah. So those are the sort of things uh, that we try to... And as Faraja, we are present in Nairobi and in Eldoret, um, within the public hospital in Eldoret at Mount Teaching and Referral Hospital. And here in Nairobi, we are also working to uh, devolve, if you want. I think devolution is a fancy word we all like. <laughs> you know, to devolve our services to be closer to where patients can reach us easily. Yeah. Uh, can access like us. hubs and things. And yeah, yeah. We, we are like established centers within the major cancer centers. Right. We are in the public health system, like in Kenyatta National Hospital, sure. where we run programs for children. Uh, but we want to look at, uh, we are exploring physical presence. We are exploring physical presence in, in uh, Kenya, uh, Kenyatta University. Uh, so that not, uh, not just... Um, being there for the patient, but also working closely with the health workers uh, so that we are able also to 
uh, you know, concentrate, uh, share uh, knowledge and notes and, 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 uh, and any concerns that we have about specific patients. Because we also offer at Faraja um, some uh, support funding for some of the patients who otherwise would not be able to complete their treatment or even start because they are indigent, they are needy, yeah. um, and maybe their insurance, uh, social insurance has ran off, or they don't even understand how the new one works, you know. <laughs> so we, we, we do that as well. Uh, maybe we can talk about your fundraising effort, efforts a little bit later in the in the podcast. I think that's because that's a kind of key thing. In fact, that's yeah. how I sort of came to hear of Faraja. Tell me, so it's Breast Cancer Aware, Awareness Month yes. this month specifically. Yes. So um, we were just, you know, how, I suppose, how um, does Faraja support sort of women specifically um, um, with with breast cancer. I mean, once you're sort of diagnosed, I know you know the big, the C word. I think is kind of you know one of those a very frightening, a frightening, yeah. um, a, a, a frightening word to, to hear. But actually, you know, it is. Uh, how does Faraja kind of support people who have who have yeah. some diagnosis all the way through to treatment? Yes, October is globally observed as the Breast Cancer Awareness Month. But maybe also for our listeners important to appreciate that every month has specific cancers that we observe. Yeah. So October is more better known because women with breast cancer were the first to come out clearly and talk about uh, what they are going through uh, without hiding uh, in the closet. Uh, but every month there will always be a cancer that we are observing. Some have been highlighted more than others, but breast cancer being one of the leading cancers among women globally. And in Kenya, for example, we get about 7,000 women who are diagnosed with breast cancer. That's a huge number. That's uh, every year? Every year. Every year, 7,000. And we lose nearly half of those, uh, nearly 3,000. That's a huge number as well. Uh, either because they, they very often it's because they presented late with the disease uh, or because they were not diagnosed in time. And we have actually tried to move away from just saying, oh, the women present late. Sometimes they present early and they get lost in the healthcare system. So it's not always that the patient didn't show up in, sure. in time. They may come, but probably uh, the bureaucracy, um, b- before they reach a center where a diagnosis is made, means that they present late. And at Faraja, we do a number of things. Um, obviously, we would like to get uh, as many p- women with are breast cancer as possible, uh, you know, stage one uh, or stage two disease, which, you know, um, they have a, a very high chance of mm-hmm. cure. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we work with other partners, especially in creating awareness uh, and education, like I'm doing today, um, about uh, what to watch out for. So it's not just waiting for the women when they have a diagnosis, but also informing and educating the public in communities. We do a lot of talks. Um, even within communities like church groups or mosques or temples or organized groups, just to let them let people know what do you need to look out for uh, when we talk about breast cancer yeah. awareness. And we tell people, you, women and men as well, where men do get, get breast, breast cancer, yeah, yeah. but they need everyone needs to be breast aware. Sure. There is a term we say breast aware. Just sure. know how your breasts look like, how they feel. Uh, so that the day you feel something unusual, you can always uh, go and have it checked. And nine out of ten times, it's actually not breast cancer. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, but but obviously, we want to make sure that it's it's not cancer. It could be many other breast diseases, and no breast diseases are not necessarily cancer. So in, in terms of creating awareness and education, that's a big component of what we do. And, the, and uh, the fact that breast cancers, some breast cancers can be hereditary as well. Like, yes. So if your mother has had breast cancer, then actually, or your grandmother, yeah. you know, then, then it's always best to be sort of super vigilant about uh, Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I mean, uh, fortunately, the ones who have, which have a hereditary link, a genetic link, is a smaller percentage, probably maybe 10 to 15 yeah. percent. A majority uh, sometimes don't even have any family history or anything. Uh, but all, everyone needs to be on lookout. So then you don't say, oh, we don't have a history of breast cancer in our family. I'm good. No, you are not. Uh, anyone can get breast cancer. And among the many myths we demystify is that it's not a disease for older women. We are seeing, and especially in this part of the world, 
our, our breast cancers present fairly early. So you may find women in their 30s. We have seen women in their late 20s with Gosh. breast cancer. So it's not a disease for the older. It's not a disease for the rich. And you say, oh, that's for much richer women. It's, it cuts across all socioeconomic demographics. So it's a disease that we all need to be on lookout um, on lookout for. And what we do at Faraja um, for those diagnosed with cancer, uh, breast cancer, in fact, our breast cancer group is one of the most vibrant, robust group that has lots of women that show up uh, to once a month uh, to exchange, uh, to get accurate information, but also sh share their own experiences. Some have survived breast cancer for 20 plus years. Mm -hmm. Others have survived for 18 years, uh, 27 years, whatever. Uh, others have survived just a year and others on active treatment. So all these um, kind of mix uh, have very rich experiences on how they are able to cope and you know we get experts, different experts based on what they want to hear uh, uh, to, to, to uh, take them through uh, different sessions and obviously our medical fund does support some of those that uh, we wish we could support everyone we are not always able to support everyone who comes uh, because they need support with breast cancer treatment but we do support some um, to enable them to uh, complete their treatment, but also uh, provide them an, with an opportunity to discuss, you know, how do they navigate the whole system? Uh, how do they navigate their care? Uh, it's, it, as I said, cancer treatment is, can be very com complex. Mm -hmm. So discussing how they'll be able to navigate through all these and who they are seeing and when they should see them, uh, that's also an important component of support. So what is the, you touched on it a, a little earlier, just about the kind of the importance <coughs> of early detection. What are the rates, that, you know, of, uh, of the successfully treating breast cancer? With an early detection, yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we, often we talk about uh, you know five year survival. Uh, you know, scientifically, you'd always look at um, if you treated, uh, let's say, a thousand women who have stage one breast cancer, for example, in five years' time, you know, they have completed their treatment and everything and hopefully gotten back reintegrated into their communities, into their jobs or or society. In five years' time, and they had uh, uh, stage one breast cancer, you still likely to have ninety-five percent of them will still be alive, and those who will have died, they will have died of other many other things. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. of many many other yeah. things. Yeah. You know, could be road accidents or sure. or whatever. Again, if you look at the same numbers, if you took a hundred women uh, with stage four breast cancer, meaning that's a cancer that has spread from the breast, uh, it has gone to other organs, maybe it is in the brain, maybe it's in the liver, maybe it's in the bones. Mm -hmm. Again, then you are likely uh, to have a very, very small percent. In five years' time, you might find you only have 40% of them alive. Right. You know, And again, you also think about their quality of life. They may be alive but in their quality of life. Probably uh, they'll, 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 be, they'll still be on active treatment uh, to keep them going. Uh, so getting them early is so critical, both uh, in terms of survival, but also in terms of quality of life. Uh, quality of life is a, a measure uh, that is increasingly uh, an increasingly important endpoint in treatment, that they are not only alive, but they are back to their jobs, they are sleeping better, they, they are not in pain, they are back to gain full activities, you know, they are, uh, and, and usually quality of life is self-reported. You know, they will feel, well, I'm back to work, I'm, you know, cancer is behind me. And you say they are enjoying a good quality of life. But if uh, they have um, uh, a stage 3 or stage 4 disease, they may be alive then, but they're still having a lot of um, issues, perhaps with pain, perhaps with other uh, sequela of uh, cancer uh, treatment, all from the disease. Uh, so they may still have to go back to hospital very often yeah, yeah. Uh, if, if they are alive. So it's important to look at both survival and quality of life. But the area the disease, I mean, that's the, the main thing. The area you catch the disease, stage one or stage two, of course, the other important thing is that the less, it, le, less it's le, likely to be much more uh, cheaper to treat, more affordable to treat than if they have advanced disease yeah. that will require um, will require more aggressive, more expensive 
treatment. But on the overall, uh, you know, we are in a place where every um, every cancer uh, or a breast cancer, for example, is characterized to the extent that uh, you know we are talking almost of uh, personalized medicines, which means that if if you take ten or take five women with breast cancer, one they may not necessarily have the same disease. The disease is in the breast, but if you looked at it under a microscope. The, the, those, the, the, the cancers would be very, very different, and meaning their treatment would be different. And this is also important, and especially when we are supporting the women, because someone may say, oh, I, I got medicines that I need to take hormonal treatment for 10 years. Uh, and the other person says, I wasn't given that kind of medicine. Yes, because you have a different your type right. of breast cancer was examined and found that you you not get help. Some are hormone dependent, yeah. you know, meaning that you need to take the you know hormone hormonal medicines uh, to keep going for another ten or so years. So it's important for patients uh, to understand that the treatment may not necessarily be the same uh, for all of them because you know all these uh, tissues in the in, uh, that have cancer are characterized you know at molecular level. And the best treatment is not necessarily the best for the next woman. Sure, sure. Uh, yeah. So, and this so you explain all of this to the to people who've been diagnosed for. But, yes, I mean, yes. Are you are you all doctors at at the at the charity, or is it are you are you a mixture of nurses? What sort of background do you, do your support network have? Yeah, within the trust, uh, we have a small core of staff. Um, you know, a very very small small core of yeah. staff, but we have uh, uh, an army. Uh, of very dedicated and committed professionals who support us on or provide us pro bono services. Our therapists, for example, provide us thousands of hours of pro bono services, you know, uh, counselors, uh, dietitians. Uh, these are professionals in their own right, and they don't charge us for that. Um, where we need, uh, say, a doctor to come and talk to the patients, we'll be able to get one to come and talk to a support group and answer their questions. They are not like employed by the trust, yeah. or we may have a breast health nurse, for example. They will, we will get them uh, for specific sessions, uh, and they will come in. So we have a large pool of experts who we need, we, us and when we need to call. We will call uh, to talk to to the patients, because we don't like give chemo or radio. We provide all these other supportive okay. services, but work with professionals yeah. uh, who are able to break down. Where we need, for example, uh, an oncology pharmacist uh, to explain things around side effects or how to deal, because as we said, cancer treatment can be really, mm -hmm. can be mm -hmm. harsh and the tight side effects can be uh, difficult to deal with. Then we get an expert in, in that specific area. Uh, and and uh, uh, keep providing information so patients don't feel oh I wasn't I didn't get this treatment so maybe my doctor uh, wasn't very sure what 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 he was doing so we are able to explain to them you got this type of treatment because of the type of disease yeah. that you have which may be different from another person so it's not um, uh, a one size fits all of them. They may get chemo, but they may get different kind of cycles of chemotherapy or even targeted, uh, you know, increasingly you get uh, what we call targeted therapies based yeah. on the biology uh, of the disease. Yeah. So in that, so the, essentially the, the trust is, is run on don't on donations and fundraising. You're, you're, you're yes. quite prolific on fundraising. Of yes. running career a lot, and often see you're holding um, events there. Yes. So tell me who um, sort of what it takes to run Faraja. How you know how your fundraising efforts are sort of managed, and how how sort of successful they are. Yes, yeah, we we really have been very very fortunate. Um, first, to be able to keep our costs, our running costs low, by working, getting our professionals provide us pro bono services. Otherwise, then we would not afford them. Mm -hmm. uh, so they will show up uh, and, and provide us services that we would otherwise have paid for. But uh, that's one way. Uh, so in indirectly, you know, we we don't we. 
we, we, we don't have to fundraise for that aspect. Uh, but uh, we provide services. Our services are free to the patients. Uh, and uh, how we do this is, 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 is through fundraising, as you have rightly uh, put it. We have two major fundraising events every year, major fundraising, because, well, uh, from January to December, we're still fundraising uh, smaller events, but the major, the, the, the flagship, uh, one is uh, the one we just had the, this past month of September, um, Be Bold, Go Gold for Childhood Cancer that sustains our programs in art and craft and music therapy uh, in Kenyatta National Hospital and in Eldoret. So that's a walk we have in Muguga, an exciting walk um, that we have on the 20th of September 2025. That's the next walk Maybe. in the forest out in Muguga, an exciting walk. Uh, adults, children, everyone is just welcome to do that. The other event that we have is a white water rafting uh, in at Sagana, uh-huh. um, the Sagana wilderness or wilderness, whichever. Yeah, <laughs> it's wild, whatever it is. Wild, <laughs> wild. Out, out in Sagana, so we get a young professionals, and I'm sure there'll be a team. Uh, hopefully from uh, from all of us here present Kofisi, next yes. year Maybe from Kofisi, do, yeah. yes. Uh, so we do white water rafting. Uh, so we get teams of five to raft uh, over a weekend, um, and they fundraise. So every team of five will fundraise as much as they can, and we have uh, you know winning teams over spread over um, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday in May. Uh, so those are the major fundraising events. We also do have individual donors. Uh, you know, one would in, would not have to wait until. May or in September to participate in a walk to do something. There are individual donors who may make a one-off donation. Uh, they just say, well, maybe I'm commemorating something, a survivorship, or maybe I'm doing something in memory of a relative or a parent or someone who died of cancer, and I'm going to make a one-off donation. We also do have regular donors uh, who may say, you know, every quarter or every month they, they can do regular donations uh, to Faraja, the, and how you can plan into that, the inf- information is actually available on our, our website, farajacancersupport.org. Uh, so we do right. have uh, people who also do special events, you know, like uh, cycling, for example. A group may say, oh, I'm going to be cycling, uh, like there's a lady cycling, in, I think, in the next week or so from Di- Diani, Mombasa to But you Nairobi. get people from abroad as well, like I know yeah. that we, there are people who come from kind of all over the world to yes. kind of support. I mean, you're and you can also do it wherever you are. Yeah, you, amazing. Yeah, yeah, even last month, there's a group that did the, the, the walk in Australia, in Sydney. Great. Uh, so they said they, didn't come, they just did their own version over there. And uh, these are the sort of things that sustain us. Um, so there are many ways of just being part of what we do, including volunteering uh, during those events uh, to make them happen. Amazing. Well, if... Um We've also got our own event um, with you coming up on the 24th of October yeah. at Kofisi 9 between 5 and 8 p.m. We're celebrating um, breast cancer survivor, survivors as well. Um, yeah. So we'll look forward to seeing you then. Absolutely. And um, David, um, thank you for being, at, well, representing Faraja, who is uh, our breast cancer hero yeah. of the month as well, because it's Mashuja, obviously, this month yes. as well. So <laughs> there's a whole, yeah. whole yeah. lot. So thank keep up the great work. Thank you. And we thank look forward you. to seeing you um, um, on the 24th. Uh, thank you for having me here. And, and I think that's a great initiative on, on 24th. Uh, the fact that uh, you're dedicating time as an organization uh, to just uh, observe and celebrate a Breast Cancer Month and pause. So, yes, we know there are women out there and men uh, with breast cancer who are heroes uh, in their own right. I think that's a really commendable uh, commendable uh, activity. Uh, and we at Faraja are committed to work and support like-minded uh, organizations uh, who think, who would post to say, yes, it's breast cancer month. Let's do something about it, including educating or informing our staff. So that's excellent. And to, and to hear the good stories as well as as well as the bad. Oh, because, there, there um, are lots know, of and good to, and stories. And to celebrate the survivors who uh, you know, have uh, come through. I can tell you, there journey. are lots and lots of good stories. I mean, I, I have been in this uh, for many, many years, probably crossing to 20. So I keep meeting people I can hardly remember. So, 
I got treated. Uh, oh, you guys were giving me chemo 19 years ago. 19 years ago, I was working in another facility where we were doing this sort of thing, and they are alive and well, or they invite me. Oh, you need to come. My grandchild is graduating, oh, and I was wonderful. treated of breast cancer. So yeah. I, I meet those people, and those are the ones that keep, make us want to wake up every day. Sure to do what we do, make a difference, because we want to see many of those su- sort of success stories. And I'm Absolutely. glad that you guys are part of that well, success. Thank you very much. Thank Absolutely. you.